the affirmation, you have to do a lot of self-talk, especially as a solopreneur, because you have to remind yourself that you went into business to make to make a profit, but also to make a difference. And when you when you get knocked down, drop I was a bar. Like, that's it. Say that again. You went into business. <laughs> what? Say it you again, girl. You went into Say it again. Welcome to the Start Right Here bonus series. Here is where we tackle the practical subjects that will enhance your beauty career or your path in beauty entrepreneurship. Today, we're talking about the money entrepreneurs might be leaving on the table. I am happy to welcome Dr. D. Bowden, founder of BCS Solutions. She is a revenue recovery specialist and the author of the book, Collect the Cash. Welcome, D. Thank you, Corinne. Happy Saturday to all y'all. This is great to be here. I'm so excited to get into this conversation of what had happened was in collection. <laughs> yeah, because that's what it is, what had happened. So, yes. Oh, it's so always tell, what had happened um, was. Let's start by yes. tell me a little bit or tell us a little bit about your background. Sure thing. So here's 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 how the story goes. So I'm Dee Bowden. I'm originally from Boston. I now live in a great state of Maryland. Um, my fun facts are I love Ferris wheel, smooth jazz, and great wines, both red and white. Um, people ask me, what's up with the Ferris wheels? I said, oh, because I see I'm the Ferris wheel person because I got buddies who love roller coasters. I can't deal with all that twisting and turning. I, I like calm. I need calm. So you heard my, so it's Ferris wheel, smooth jazz, and great wine. Everything that's calm and peaceful. Those are my things. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk a little bit about, you know, your vocation and how you got into that. Oh, sure. Sure. So, so the story goes. So, so you want to know the what had happened was how did I how did I end up exactly, in this revenue exactly, recovery money uh, is a space subject? So okay, that's the, and yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Embrace yes. the idea of making it, but when we talk about mm -hmm. it, there are a lot of us who are yeah unprepared for all of Angst about the it. things that we need to yeah. know. All the things, yeah. Well, first of all, great question. So, 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 so to your to your fabulous audience. So, what had happened was about 18 years ago, I used to work for a small IT company outside of Boston, where I'm originally from. Corinne, you've worked in corporate. I've worked in corporate, so you know how it is. You just welcome aboard. Here's your cubicle or your office. Here's your box and here's your plant. I kind of make it as, as a joke. But what, what what had happened was they had a team of collectors that there were a team of people that were collecting money for this IT company. And so when I got hired, they had eight million dollars owed to this company. Eight million. Let me say it again, eight million dollars. So when I got hired, they were like, "Your resume says you know how to collect." I said, "Okay, I'm gonna go collect." So I, I'm a believer. So I had a short, short prayer, short conversation with God. Had my prayer, and what came up out of it was that business to business collections in the beauty space or any other space is three things. It's usually four things. It's problem solving, answering the question of what had happened was, which means how come the money hasn't come into the bank. Number two is customer service. Whenever you don't get a product or a service delivered correctly, you as the owner or whoever works with you has to solve that problem for the customer. It's gratitude. It's the people who take your phone call, who solve the problem, who cut the check, who do the things. And then the last thing, as you and I both know, is relationship building. Everything in business and in life is always relationships. It's always relationships. Because I jokingly say you can't do everything over, over 140 right, characters. Right, right. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so. So, back to the, so back to the story. So I get hired. I get my cube, I get my get my clues, and then I go to work and I literally start making phone calls. I literally get a, a list of accounts and it says eight million dollars is a balance. And I was like, wow, like because the first thought was, okay, what were these other people doing that they couldn't collect right. this money? That's the first thought. And then second, that's okay. I need to figure out how to do this. So I'm a problem solver at by 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 nature. I'm I've always been that curious person. It's like, okay, if something isn't working, if the system doesn't make sense, I'm always trying to figure out the why behind the what. So my my why behind the what was how come y'all have owe, are owed this much money? So in 60 days, I recovered six okay, million dollars. Go back, say that again. 60 days, um, and, six and, million dollars. In 60, 60 days, I recovered six million dollars. And here's the here's the here's the cool part. I was a part time person. I only worked Monday through Friday, four to eight. Now. After I collect my part, because I, as I said at the beginning of the story, I'm part of a team. I helped collect the money. The CEO of the company says, 
let's go downstairs and have a chat. Now, if you've ever been in sales, salespeople usually get commissions when they close it, close right. a new, close a new client. I thought we were going to get a bonus. Nah, we come downstairs. He says, listen, thank you all so very much for your service across contracts, order entry, order fulfillment, invoicing, which is bills, account receivable, which is me collections and all the people. Thank you so much. Executive decisions made. We're closing the company today. You got 30 minutes to go pack up your box and leave the building two months before Christmas. So after that extraordinary experience happened to me, I started thinking about this was a small company, 100 people or less. Now, if you're in whatever industry you're in, this can happen. We actually we watched we watched this story on Fleek during COVID. People 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 had 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 products and sales and projections that the money they were expecting to make, and they looked up and they're like, "Oh crap, I'm I'm not getting paid, or I can't make my sales, or whatever." So, a few years ago, I told this story to my book coach, and she was like, "D." Your why is you want small business owners to win, and so we play double dust. And she actually helped me to get, made help me to to get the story out. So we created the book called Collected Cash. But it was all for me telling this one story and realizing that people's lives, when they go to work for you, whether you're in the beauty industry or whatever industry, when people attach themselves to your your goal, your vision, it's your responsibility to make sure that the money is correct. I say it this way: collect the cash. The sale is not complete until the money's in the bank, but you must collect it first. And if you don't like collecting money, then you need to have somebody that's trained and skilled on how to do this. Because here's, you said the big, at the top of the hour, money is a very, t- a very touchy subject, person, personally and professionally. When we got, when we got to go negotiate a salary, it's like we, we listen. We're trying to get the most money because we, we know we're not. They're not going. They, once you, if you don't get it negotiated right the first time, there's, there's not a second chance to, to redo what you did. And the same thing with collecting your money. When you, when you have that sale for your product or your service, the expectation is that the person who, who's buying from you is going to pay you. Now, whether they're paying you up front or they're paying you over payment terms, meaning you know you have a, a deposit and then in 30 days you're billed and in 30 days and 30 days, the expectation is that, that we entered into an agreement and you're going to pay me. And then what do I do if I don't get paid? And we'll, we'll get into that. But that's, that's how I got here is because of what happened to me personally. And then as I, I didn't say this, but I don't have kids. So collect the cash is kind of my kid and my legacy. And it's, okay. it's, the, it's, it's the thing I'm going to leave behind when I'm no longer here is that, you know, I hope carefully there's, there's enough, you know, podcast interviews and, and books and all the things that are written so that you, if you ever Google me or whatever new, this new service will be in the future, you'll be able to find me and collect the cash and you'll get my tips, tools, and strategies on how to make sure you have your money in the bank because I didn't want to see what happened to me happen to anybody else. And then, like I said, I watched my story live on during COVID and I personally like theater. So this was personal. So when they shut down Broadway, I was like, OK, y'all, y'all, y'all are for real, for real play. Y'all shut down Broadway. Because think right. about it. Broadway is a multimillion dollar business and every theater in Times Square in New York City is its own business. And they have shows and then, then they have people who had contracts for Chotskis and T-shirts and all the things, all the sales projections that they were expecting to make based on those shows running, those shows were canceled, which means people lost money, people lost sales. And I kept watching my story happen over and over and over again. I'm like, okay, so clearly nobody's talking about this. So I came on to talk about this and make it make it not be so scary, but for you to right. understand it's a part of the it's a, it's a part of the sales so, right. the sales so cycle. Let's talk about the sales cycle a little bit. Sure. So, so, sure. so I think that a lot of times we think about, you know, just getting our product sold. But yeah. if you are a business that makes product, you are or you are a business that makes componentry for somebody. So you're doing B2B. So mm-hmm. we're talking about B2B and B2C. B2C often is easier to collect the cash because they have to pay you to in order to get the product. But right. when we're talking B2B and payment terms, it mm-hmm. gets a little bit more complicated. Mm-hmm. So um talk to me a little bit about uh um how where complication sets in because a lot of times we think we're making a good deal, but we haven't read the terms correctly. Oh, oh, wait, not, not, re- not, not reading the c- terms. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> 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 okay. So in business, when you, when you enter into an agreement with somebody to sell your services, it's really important that you read the terms and conditions. And that's basically, I say, I break it down in layman's terms. It's okay. What are you buying from me? What do we agree to? What are the terms? The terms are okay. There's a deposit, and then there's going to be three more in, three more installment payments, and then if a payment is missed, 
it's got to be stated somewhere that if we if we if we run into a difficulty with okay after we, I make the deposit I provide the service and then I go to swipe your card or you you supposed to invoice me and I yeah, you pay me and it doesn't happen well, I'm not going to continue do, offering you services we need to talk and I think that's the part that most people don't want to do is because it's like oh I don't want to have to get on the phone and talk to you I just expected you to I do my th do my thing I'm gonna get my money and keep it moving but what people don't understand is that. Whenever you don't collect the cash, you guys, you have to go into problem solving. And I think that's what people, that's the art that people have gotten away from because it's like, okay, let me just text you. No, sometimes you have to go old school and have a conversation and say, okay, listen, we, we, we signed this contract. You signed it. I signed it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what, where, where's the breakdown? Oh, well, I was waiting on a payment from such and such client and didn't come in, which is why I can't pay you. Okay. Well, you need to convey that. And that's what people don't do. People don't talk. People think that we, I can just read your mind. I'm like, no, we have to talk about it. And here's the thing. In your contract terms, you need to spell out that if 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 a payment is missed, then services are put on hold until we until we rectify that issue and then you fix it. And then if it can't be fixed, you may you may also take a loss. But you, the goal is you the goal of this session is for you not to lose any more money. But you also have to be prepared for it, which means you have to you need to have margin so that if a sale doesn't come through, if something does go left, you're going to be OK. And that's important. That's the place people don't talk about right. a lot. So what kind of issues? So you're an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't have your accounts receivable set up properly, what ha, what's the boomerang effect or the the um, the impact on the overall business? Oh, first boomerang effect, cash flow, which means you have no no coins, no no bag to do anything. You can't pay yourself. You can't pay for you can't pay for advertising if you have a staff of one or more, you can't pay them. Being able to track your payments is just as important as tracking your sales. It's just as important. Here's here's a, a great way I can explain it. If I can teach a teach a small point about what you should yes. have as a system. Everybody who's listening, y'all have cell phones, whether your team iPhone or Android. The cell phone story will, will teach you why you need to make sure you're tracking everything from the beginning. So welcome to such and such phone store. Hey D, what brings you in today? Oh, my phone isn't working. Oh, well, what's wrong? Before they even start to diagnose the problem, they take your driver's license, they scan it into the system, and they confirm that you are who you say you are. So first step is they, oh, you know you're eligible for an upgrade? No, nah, I didn't know I was eligible for an upgrade. I wasn't even looking for an upgrade. But you know, this, the, the, the idea of the sale has already started. So the first thing of this, this tracking system, which we're going to learn about what can happen if you don't track your payments, is this. So steps, column number one is sales with the phone. With the phone. Second is that they enter, you enter into a contract when you buy a phone automatically. They set up terms, payments, what are you buying, whether you buy the phone outright or you put on, well, we, old school, we call it layaway plans, but you, you enter a contract, you're either buying the phone outright or you're making monthly payments. So there's a new sale, there's a new contract. Order entry is when they take the back of the box, which has a barcode, and they scan that information and they put that information on your, on your account. So now you have Samsung 20, now you're up to Samsung 21, 2 or 3, whatever it is today. And all the information is now uploaded into your system. So there's a sale. New contract, order entry, order fulfillment. There's 10 phones in the back. They just sold you one. Now it is nine. So you're keeping track of your inventory. Sale, contract, order entry, order fulfillment. Corinne, when, do you, when, when would you like your bill from the phone company? You say, oh, I usually pay my invoices on the whatever date, the 15th, the 20th, or whatever. Okay, great. We're going to change, put your information in that you're, you will receive the bill from the phone company on such and such a date. That's accounts payable. The company bills you. Accounts receivable is that you pay them. You pay them. So sales, contract, order entry, order fulfillment, accounts payable, accounts receivable. And then when you're getting your new phone, because they basically will tell you, oh, we can transfer your phone from this to this. We can take a credit. And then they watch you over to the register and you say, they ask you, how would you like to pay for this? You say cash, credit, or debit. But here's the thing. You don't get to leave the phone store until you have these two magical words, transaction approved, because you're not leaving the phone store until all those things I just described happen. So if you're in the beauty industry, product industry, service industry, you have to track your sales, your contract, your orders, your payments. And then I forgot one thing, notes. You should always have a, have a notes section so that if something goes left or right, you're tracking what happens. So for example, with that phone system I just, phone system I just described, if I got, my, I got home and I was supposed to have um, a new, I don't know, something a new gadget for the phone and i get home and i look at my receipt and something is wrong i would go back right back up to the phone store and say how can i speak to the person who sold me this phone you know you promised me this 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 and this and i'm missing this you're expecting them to do customer you expect them to do problem solving off the bat 
and do customer service, you expect them to hear your story, fix it, do gratitude and, and maintain that good customer relationship because they know in these these social media streets, it's 30 seconds. Hi, I was just in such and such store. I had a horrible experience. And next thing you know, that thing is global. And right. the company's the company's reputation is messed up. The expectation is that they're going to solve your problem. So those are the things that can happen. So if you as, as a business owner, if you don't track your customers and track your payments, you won't know how much money you have for the month. So you can either meet meet payroll, plan for advertising, plan for expansion. It's all the things. If you have to order products, how much, how, if you're, if you're short on cash, you can't order more products. Right. So if you are somebody with a retail store, if you, if you're a retail store or if you're selling to a retail store, because then they become the customer that has to pay you. Yep. Um, you have to look closely at their payment model because it may not be 30 days. It might be. And you have to say, is it upon delivery or what are the terms? So, you know, it's so funny that, you know, when we build websites or we go, we use websites all the time and there's all terms and conditions and websites. Absolutely. Nobody reads them. No, not, and, not, not a um, one. Just, just, <laughs> like, that. just <laughs> like, oh, click and accept cookies. You know, lots of people accept cookies, mm-hmm. not knowing what they're accepting. So, um, so we're not reading the terms and conditions for payments. That's when we can have a serious problem. And a Absolutely. Cash flow. Absolutely. And that's and that's one of the things you have. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up. That's one of the things you have to make sure of is that when you enter into a contract, you ask them, what are your payment terms? Do you is it? So, for example, if you if you're doing deliver, you know, deliver, deliver of a product or service, is it payment upon receipt? That means when you deliver the service or the product, the money, the money, you know, EFT, electronic funds transfer or ACH or cash or credit, however, they're going to pay you. That's one thing. Or if it, is, is it net 30, which means they're you're going to they're going to you're going to invoice them and they're going to pay you in 30 days. I mean, if you, it all depends on how you how you structured your payment terms. A lot of us want to get make sure, a lot of us are used to doing everything up front. So, example, um, you, you make a payment, you swipe a credit card, you do it through PayPal, you do it through Square, you do it through Stripe. The, the, the expectation is that the, when I swipe the credit card, the payment comes through. Now, usually it takes about 24 hours, but the point is that it's done. If you're dealing in payment terms where it's you know contractual, where it might be net 30, 60, or 90, you have to know that up front. And you also have to be prepared for, if I don't get paid in 30 days, do I have enough of a, a savings or, or, or funds available that can carry me over while I'm waiting for these payments to come through? And that's something I think a lot of people don't plan right. for. So let's just talk a little bit about planning. So it is, it is, um, it is not just cost of goods that you have to think about. Mm-mm. You know, you know personnel, you know cost of goods, but you also have to consider what is the cushion that you need and then mm-hmm. how that impacts the runway before you're going to run out of cash. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why that's why the tracking system is so important because you need to know, okay, if I have a if I have a client that's at 10,000 that you know, so let's say one contract is worth $10,000 and then you're in, you, let's say that you know the deposits come in and you're invoicing them. So you know you have one client that's at ten thousand. You know that you'll have ten. You'll, you, the expectation is either in thirty, sixty, or ninety days you're going to have ten thousand dollars, and then you have to invoice them and follow up as soon as you as soon as you submit your product. You invoice them and you're following up to make sure did you get the payment? Did you get my invoice? Is everything correct? And then you know, expect you're tracking when is the payment coming in because you need to know every month. How much money am I going to have? How much revenue am I going to have in my account so I can do the things I need to do? And if a payment is missed, what do you have in place to do the follow-up? Because the fortune is always in the follow-up. And that's the part we, we talked about when we said that money is very touchy. Most people do not want to have to do the follow-up phone calls. But here's the thing. If you have a contract and people haven't paid you, you you have if they're like I said, you have to be really good with just as you just as you are confident to ask for the sale, you have to be just as confident to ask for the money. And that if that's not your thing, then you find people that you can kind of come alongside you and do that. And I understand that because especially if you're a solopreneur, you're doing all the things, your sales, right. your marketing, your social media, your billing, your payables, your, your, you know, all the things. And I get it. But the thing is there, I mean, but you also have to understand that there, even though there's an expectation that you're going to get paid, it's your responsibility to do the follow up. The fortune is always in the follow up. So let's talk about it's this always there. because mm-hmm. a lot of people have, you know, are solopreneurs or have small staffs. How important is it to include somebody? So, so it might be an accountant that's looking like bookkeeper, but that's not mm-hmm. the same as somebody who's looking at accounts receivable, is it? It can be. Now, the bookkeeper, can, the bookkeeper can do both. Now, you, if you have right. a, a book, if you have a bookkeeper, number one, 
I, you, I'll say it this way. If you have a bookkeeper, ask him or her, okay, do you just, do, what do, what do you, what do, what do your skills cover? Do you cover billing? Do you cover collections? Because there are some people that say, oh, the only thing I do is I just set up your chart of accounts and I just track all your expenses. That's all I do. Then you're like, mm, okay, so you, you don't do billing and you don't do collections. Okay. So if you want to get a bookkeeper, you need to get somebody that's well-rounded in setting up the, setting up, tracking all of your expenses, plus doing your invoicing plus collecting the cash because that way that person is working in partnership with you. Because here's the thing, even though you are fantastic at all the things, all of us drop the ball somewhere. Right. All of us drop the ball somewhere. We all, we all drop it. And, and the thing is there's so there's in your business, there's so many moving parts. You've got sales, you've got marketing. Now in this social media world, you got to market all the time. Then you've got to go prospect to get new clients. And then you've got to have the sales conversation. Then you got to get over the fact that, okay, you were counting on this sale, this, this, this client to buy, you know, so many bundles of whatever. And it's like, oh crap, they're not, they're not buying it. Now you got to, you know, get up from that, shake yourself off, say your affirmations and get up again and keep moving. Right. And be, because here's the thing that people don't talk about. You know, and I, I was being funny, but I'm serious. The affirmation, you have to do a lot of self-talk, especially as a solopreneur, because you have to remind yourself that you went into business to make, to make a profit, but also to make a difference. And when you, when you get knocked down, Drop I was a bar. Like, that's it. Say that again. You went into business. What? Say it again, girl. You went into business to business to make a profit and to make a difference. That's why you went into business. Just like me. I went into business to make make money and to make a difference. And and there are sometimes on this entrepreneurial journey, you hit roadblocks. You know, sometimes it's mental. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you've been you've been prospecting, 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 trying to get somebody to buy your service, your product, your second, the third, and you're I mean, you're hitting wall after wall after wall, and you got to figure out how to get yourself back up again and keep going. You have to get, and, and and sometimes it's okay. Sometimes you have to admit, okay, I just didn't handle that really well. That happens, and you got to admit that. You got to regroup, and you got to get up again. But here's the thing: your why has to be bigger than just making money. That's why I said you make money, make a profit and make a difference. You got to see it as, as your, your, your business is, is, is service. Your business is service. All the great companies that we, that we admire today, they're, yes, they're, they're making great money, but what are they doing? They are serving a all need. Of them. Yeah. Yeah. All of them. Serving a need, solving a problem. Yep. 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 Uh, or bringing joy into somebody's life in some way. You know, all the, all the above to, um, to do that. But I, I, I love this idea that, 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 that when hiring a bookkeeper, you look at skills, not just Have to. can you set it up, yeah. but what else can you offer me? Or, cause I might need this. And I also, um, let's talk a little bit. Is, are, is there software that people can use to keep track of their, their stuff? Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'm 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 old school, so I like Excel. But I I know most people use QuickBooks. Now I'm not. Okay. I'm, I, I know people use QuickBooks, and and the thing is, you can. Here's the thing. You can this this one. I can tell you. You can Google it and say, okay, what's what's the best software for me to use at for my accounting systems? I know most people use you know QuickBooks. I think there's something called Wave. Wave. I think it's called Wave. But I know QuickBooks for sure. That's not my. That's not my. my that's not my land of expertise. But I'll tell you this. I'll just. I'll tell you. If you don't like using Excel, which you can set up set up your tabs and the columns. Get yourself QuickBooks and then you can go on QuickBooks.com and I'm pretty sure they actually have people that are actually QuickBooks experts that you can partner with and talk to them about, hey, listen, I'm looking for this. And then let them, let them, you know, schedule a call. Here's the thing. If you think, here's, here's something you got to get good with. Even if you don't know, always ask the questions. Don't be afraid to mm -hmm. ask the question. Don't be afraid to ask the question. I just told y'all, I don't know QuickBooks. That's, that's not, that's not my, that's, listen, that's not my ministry. <laughs> right. That's not my ministry. But here's the thing. Google is a, is a great resource. And if you are with, if you are, are, are in a uh, relationship with other business owners, just ask them, Hey, what do you use? For, what do you use for your accounting system? Or like I say, go to Google, Hey, you know, what, what do you recommend? And, it, and it'll give you a list of things. And then, like I said, I think you can go to quickbooks.com. I'm pretty sure they have a little chat button that comes up and says, Hey, how, how can we help you today? And you might say, Hey, I'm, I'm, I want to set up my, I want to make sure I set up my systems correctly. What do you recommend? Also, you, if you have friends that, that are, that have accountants or, have CPAs in their in their in your network. Ask them what do you recommend. Don't be afraid to ask the questions. I, I you know, all of us don't know. We none of us knows what all of us knows. But if you don't ask the question, you're not going to know at all. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to the Start Right Here podcast and leave a review. Also, you can sign up for our mailing list at theberoundtable.com, so you will be on the know 
about all the good things coming. So let's talk a little bit about what happened. So um, I had a net 30 or I had a net 60 and I didn't get paid. And what you said, have a conversation, but what, how do you have an effective conversation with a vendor? Sure thing. First off, do, the way you have effective conversation is with the vendor. One, do you have a copy of your invoice? That's step one. Before you get on the phone, before you get on the phone, you got to do the you got to do the prep work. So where's your invoice? And you got to make sure that your invoice was prepared properly. Do you is the information on there correctly? The name of your the name of your vendor and all their information, your information. What do they buy from you? Sneakers, services, whatever. And 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 on the invoice, does it say the payment terms? And does it say if you know if there are any questions, email us at you know, info at accountsfable.com. So check your invoice to make sure it, it was prepared properly. Number two, if you do, I'm, I'm, I speak from corporate because that's more of my, my experience, but if you're dealing with a vendor that d deals with payment terms, accounts payable. Hi, this is this is Corinne or this is D from such and such company. Can I speak to the person accounts payable, please? Hey, sure, this is Susie, Shaniqua, whatever her name is. How are you doing today? Great, thanks. How are you? Listen, um, I'm following up on the status of my invoice number, blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, hold on. Give me a second, please. Let me look in the system. Oh, you know what? We never received it. Excuse me? You never received it. Can I confirm with you the, the email I was supposed to send it to? Oh, yeah, it was info at. Oh, I'm sorry. We changed it. Now it's admin at or whatever. Oh, OK. Can you do me a favor, please? Can you shoot me an email with that real quick? Because you know what? Here's the thing. I don't want to. I, I would need to do a course correction because I, I don't I've, I made this mistake once but I don't want to do it again. So I can you just shoot, shoot me that real quick? Yeah, sure. Blah, 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 blah. All right. You know what? Can I, can I, can I, am I able to send you a revised invoice? And then can you confirm receipt? Sure. Okay. And now I need to find out, okay, we can do this so I can get the course correction, submit a, a revised invoice. And then when, it, when is the next payment run? When is the next check run? When, when a payment's being issued? Oh, it'll be, it'll be scheduled for this date. Can you can you confirm that for me in email and writing, please? I just want to make sure because I'm 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 doing my follow up on the phone call. I'm getting all the things I need in an email, and, and and then you close it with thank you so much for taking my phone call. Thank you so much for explaining that we made a mistake, and thank you for ensuring that we're going to get paid. Appreciate it. That's it, and you're done. Bye. Easy breezy. Yeah, yeah. So that's great when you have made a mistake, but uh, when the company makes a mistake, um. You know, you don't want it to devolve, and especially if this is a long-standing vendor, you don't want it to devolve, like say, into a shouting match of any any, any sort. But um, as you talked about relationship building, um, is this where you lean in? If you have a contact at the company, do you reach out? Absolutely, how, how absolutely. You handle that? Absolutely. So if the if, so, if the vendor made a, if if your client made a mistake, first of all, I think that you first of all you have to acknowledge it because it's the elephant that's in the room. It's got to it's, it's got to be acknowledged. That's the first thing. And then the, then the skill of, of problem solving is, OK, how, how can we work to get this to resolution? That's the question you're trying to ask. You're not trying to. That's the question you're asking. How can we get this to resolution? You know what? We acknowledge the mistake was made. A data entry error was made. It was sent to the wrong department, whatever the issue is. How can we work together to resolve this? And if, the, if you're not the person that can help me, can you can we can can you connect me to the person that can? That's one. Number two, if you have a contact inside the company, absolutely. You have to you have to leverage all your tools. <laughs> you absolutely have to leverage all your tools. And because because sometimes things get caught. A lot of times what happens is, especially if you're dealing in, you know, in, in contracts, a lot of times things get caught in the weeds. And it's, you know, it was in it was sent to this box and then it had to be, you know, shipped, you know, electronically uh, sent to this box. And then somebody else had to sign off on it and on and on and on. And it, it, a step might have been missed. And you're not going to know that because, of course, you know, pr previously it's it's gone through the system. You know, check box, check box, checks box, checks, and then boom, the check came. And somehow a, ch a box didn't get checked, which means your money isn't being released. But you're not going to know that because that's the weeds part. But you, but like I said earlier, this is all about problem solving. So if if the vendor made a mistake or client made a mistake, you're trying to get to resol. Not trying, excuse me. You are working to get to resol. I don't take out the word trying because you're not trying. You are. The, you have to declare. I'm working to get this to resolution. It's a it's a mindset shift. It's that okay. We have an issue. We need to get this to resolution. What's how can we do this? And then you sometimes you have to ask the questions, and then sometimes you just have to take notes and let them tell you. And if you made a mistake, own it and then fix it. I think people just don't like taking responsibility. There's like, oh, I never do that. I'm like, yeah, no, nah, you did, and just own it. 
and then fix it. I believe in course correction. I, I listen. I live by course correction. I feel I'm I'm the type that listen. If we I made a mistake, I'm the first one. I'm gonna tell you. Yep, I made a mistake. Because either a when I look back over my notes, I realize I missed a step. That's number one. Number two, I might have gotten the information wrong. Number three. I just could have been off that day and just just didn't just 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 didn't. OK, got it. Now, how do we course correct and then do that and then understand that, you know, yes, you're in the relationship building business, but you also have to understand sometimes you have to give people grace. I think people forget that part. You know, it's mm-hmm. like we, we, everybody makes if people make mistakes. Now, the thing is, if the mistake keeps happening, then that's a different issue, because then you got to you got to get to the bottom of what happened, because maybe it was the information that was conveyed incorrectly. Maybe it was put into the system wrong. Maybe somebody is new and just doesn't understand the way you process things. It could be a, a myriad of things, but that's the problem solving thing. And I think that when you're able to get to the why behind the what of what went wrong and then you're, you're willing to fix it, if, if you think about it like this. When I told to uh, share the cell phone story, whatever phone we're up to now with Samsung, I think it's 21. But don't you know there was a Samsung one? And wow. guess what? Think about it. There was a Samsung one and an iPhone one. They're up to whatever number it is today, 14, 15, whatever number it is. The point is they started with something. They put it out into the market. They got feedback. They got information. Then they said, OK, we're going to go back and we're going to we're going to course correct. We're going to make a better version. And they've kept they keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing. It. Y'all get system updates all the time. It's nothing like when your phone gets hijacked you're in the middle of something. It's like the software comes in. And all of a sudden it's like it does a download. You're like, wait, I was in the middle of something. The point is, is that the, if the phone companies can do this and they keep making corrections and keep making adjustments. Why? Because they want to put out the best product. You have to do the same thing in, in your in right. your space. So you're making the best product. You and and that means you acknowledging, um, and running your best business is acknowledging what you don't know and getting exactly. the people that that can help you do that. And if you're not good with money, get good with money or get somebody who is right. Yeah. Um, but there comes a time where there may be a scenario in which you've tried the relationships, you've tried your <laughs> follow ups, you've tried all of those things, and you're sort of at you know, um, up against the wall with payment, getting payment from someone. Um, and, and a lot of people hire someone like you, Mm -hmm. um, when they're, uh, but what is, what are your options? Then you don't write it off. You don't leave money on the table. Do you? Sometimes you do. Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes you do. Cause here's the thing. Tell me more about that. Okay, if you if you decide to write it off, one that's that's a business decision because that means that you have exhausted all of your all of all of your options. So you have, you've said you've said um, follow up letters, you've um, asked for the payment, you've done second letters, you've done third letters. You may have considered to take them to small claims court. You might have sent them to a, a collections attorney and let let you know you know turn the account over to them and let let them do it. Or you decide you know what. This is just a headache, and I'm. It's just like I'm. I just don't want to be bothered. And sometimes you have to make that decision. And now, it, that, now, and that's that's a personal decision. Number one, because that's going to be based on how much revenue you have in in your bank accounts. And can, are you good with if I lose this ten thousand dollars or however much money is it, is it going to impact the overall health of my business? So that's one. Number two, I don't want to ever see anybody lose any money. I'm. I listen. I'm. In, I'm in the revenue recovery business. I don't want you to lose your money. But sometimes you have to decide because sometimes the the, the client and the level of stress that you're going through to try to get back this money isn't worth it. Worth, worth it. And if it's impacting your 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 health, because uh, listen, all money ain't good money. And sometimes you just got to go. I just. I. I just. I. I I'm just going to take this loss. But here's the thing: if you take the loss. Make sure you learn the lesson. I'll Ooh, say it again. Say that again, because that's, that's if you right. if, right if you take the loss, make sure you learn the lessons. And here's some here's some of the lessons. One, when you look at this vendor that you had a had, that you did business with, was there ever a, a inkling, a flag that came up that said, mm, "I'm not sure about this"? If you had that first, mm, "I'm not sure about this," that was a sign that maybe there's something you need to look at, whatever whatever the it is. Number two. Look at look at your look at your your payment history with them. Was there always drama, drama, stress, and drama with them every time you had to go collect the money? If they were a person that was like, "I'm gonna pay you today," and you in the payment the end of the day comes and the payment didn't come in, and then you get on the phone with them and there's always a story. That, that, that that's the lesson. Okay, clearly you have to do things differently. That means okay, if you work with anyone like that again, you either get all your money up front, 
number one. Number two, you get half in front and the second half. And then your t- payment terms are uh, work stops. And I'm, I'm not an attorney, so I'm just going to say it the way I would say, it. you know, basically work stops until all the payments are caught up. Three, you have to be you have to be OK with that. Sometimes pe- every all clients aren't good clients and all money isn't good money. And the lesson are is that, OK, in order to do this again. What systems do you have in place? What's your follow-up system for when you're not getting paid? Do you have emails that go up automatically? Do you have somebody that's, that's doing the follow-up calls? Are you okay with the fact that this, this was a hard lesson, I'm going to learn it, and I'm not going to do this again? And you sometimes sometimes you have to sit down and just, I'm old school. I like notes. If something doesn't, doesn't work, I'm like, okay, let me, let me make an example of this. I'm going to write down all the things I learned so that I don't do this again. How I learned how to collect the money is because I made mistakes in the beginning. You know, I had to learn that, you know, accounts receivable is problem solving because, of course, in my career, you know, you're taught, OK, here's your accounts. Make the calls, make the calls, make the calls. And I was like, Mm-mm, that doesn't work because I have to I have to build a relationship with the person on the other end of the phone who owes me the money. And if I'm just like, hey, you owe my money, dah, 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 anybody working, that, that's not that's not working. What I discovered was I get on the phone. I'm polite. I thank you for taking my phone call. I make a connection with you. I do the follow up and I always say thank you at the end. And I learned that those were the those were the soft skills of AR or collecting the cash that made a difference. Now, of course, there's the aging, which is the report of how much money is owed to you, all the invoice and all that thing. But you also have to understand that money is sensitive anyway, and how you handle it is is important. And if people on the other end of the phone feel like you're not courteous to them or you're yelling at them or you're disrespectful to them, anybody first of all, if you gotta think about it, if I if I call into you and and I'm rude to you. What's going to make you want to help me solve my problem? Nothing. <laughs> not a daggone thing. They're not. So how you handle it? And I get it. Now, listen, we all are human. I get it. Sometimes you're frustrated because the payments haven't come through. But here's the thing. That person on the other end, especially if you're dealing in corporate or dealing with vendors, the person on the other end of the phone, unless that's the owner of the company, that person doesn't necessarily write the check. What they do is they help process the check. But how you help that check get processed is how you deal with them. And so being a practitioner, I had to learn that. So I'm, I'm, it's always been about building relationships. And I'm the person that I've had people come back to me and say, D, no one has ever come back and said, thank you for helping let, for our help. And I was like, oh, I'm going to make that l- l- lesson. When I said about get the lesson, thank you. That's why gratitude is one of my things, because I've had right. people in government and corporate and IT and telecom and software tell me, especially the people on, on the on the ground level, say, D, no one ever comes back and says, thank you. That's okay, bet. I'm gonna be that one person that, but you help me get this done, I'm gonna tell you thank you. Period, thank you. That's and I always Let's talk about the book, Collective. Yeah. Yes, hey, that's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> so collect the cash. So the journey to collect the cash came about because I told the story to my book coach a couple of years ago, and she was like, D, your why is you want small business owners to win? I said, yeah. And now here's the crazy, crazy part, Corinne. I didn't know that when I told the story. I just knew that I kept seeing people go out of business and losing money. And I was like, this is crazy to me. It made no sense. So she, you know, I took her, I took, I took a book, sorry, I took a book writing class with her and she was like, your why is that you want us to win? I said, yeah, I want y'all to win. And so Collect the cash, you know, the sale is not complete until the money's in the bank came from my personal story. And as I said earlier, I don't have I don't have kids. So collect the cash is kind of is my kid, is is my legacy. And it's the it's the it's the it's the mindset for collecting cash because if I say it this way, if you're a, if you're a sports person, you'll appreciate this because everybody who follows sports knows about the zone. There's usually our favorite players always, especially right now, it's, I think it's the NBA playoffs. So they're getting into the yeah. zone. You see them with heads, headsets on just like us. They're listening to music or affirmations, all the things they're getting. They're, they're doing pregame warm up. They're getting ready for, for game day. Then there's game day when they're on the court. You see them practicing and all the things. And then there's post game when they're either celebrating or they're watching film to figure out, OK, hmm, how can we course correct what we didn't do really well on the court so we can do better the next time? Well, in my book, Collected Cash, I actually have a section call, called uh, the Collection Zone, and it's pregame. What are you saying to yourself before you get on the on the phone to talk to that customer that could be challenging? And you're like, oh, man, every time I talk to them, it's always OK. But you have to get your own mindset ready to get on the phone to talk to them. Game day. How many calls do you have to make? How many accounts do you have to work on? What's what's the revenue you want to bring in that day? And then you got to set your mind and keep it set and go get after it. And then post game is celebrating. I believe in celebrating the wins, whether you collect a dollar or in my case, millions of dollars all in between. I celebrate every win because. What that does is it builds momentum. 
Because if I get that first dollar, I'm like, oh yeah, let me step here in this chair a little, little, strong, little, little, little taller. I done got this first dollar. <laughs> listen, I done, let me pop that color. I done popped my color. I got a dollar. Listen, if I got a dollar, I can get five, I can get 10, I can get millions and all the things. But you're building on the momentum and you have to build that collections muscle in the B2B space just as you had to build the sales muscle in the, in the sales space. It's the same thing to me because it, it's, it's, yeah, it's I like that idea of, of thinking as a, thinking of it as building a muscle because you know, you start out weak in, yeah, absolutely. in something new. Anything you approach, you're going to start out weak. You're a novice. And it's by by um, concentration and repetition that you build, you know, you build proficiency in it. So absolutely. the same as you build a muscle. You're not building a muscle overnight. You're just going, you're in that gym, building it, lifting the weight, you know, taking the pain, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, Finding the icy heart, looking, listen, finding the icy heart for those knees. <laughs> yeah. So that is so building the muscle of um of understanding the, cash. the importance of 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 collecting. And but I love the idea of if you can if you can collect the dollar, you can collect a million. It, it's it is, and if you can sell a dollar, you can sell something worth a dollar. You can sell something worth a million dollar. Like absolutely so for entrepreneurs. That mindset is 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 um is is so so important. Yeah, I understand that. So, how could people get in touch with you? Well, first of all, Corinne, thank you so very much. This has been such an enjoyable experience. I've had so much fun here. So let me start off with my with my with my example of gratitude. So oh, that's well, so I, listen, to you too. Absolutely. <laughs> so listen, y'all. Listen, if if y'all want to learn how to collect the cash do this. Go to www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book. That's www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book. Also for your listening audience, I have something called five tips to collect the cash. And if you go to www.collect, I'm sorry. Yeah. www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book, you should see a thing that says resources. You can actually sign up for a free download. And it's, it gives you five tips. So I go over, um, uh, ask for the payment. I tell you about making sure you schedule your reminders. I tell you, I talk to you about track your system, uh, setting up your tracking system. And so the five tips will help you. If you, if you don't want the book, the five tips will give you the five things every business owner needs to know what to do to make sure you get paid. Yeah. So say, so she is offering you, let me clarify and say it again, just in, for the people in the back, she's offering you the five tips. Everybody, every business owner needs to get paid. Everybody who's a business owner or aspires to be one should download it. <laughs> know too much about this. We yeah. can never yeah. know too much about, you know, making sure our um, cash flow is as healthy as possible. Yeah. One more time for so, the people in the back. So www.collectthecash.biz forward slash book. That's where you get the book. And you can also get the resource. It's five tips to collect the cash. And it gives you five things that you need to do. So tracking your payments, um, asking for the payment, um, getting everything's in order, all the things you, 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 you get, you get the download, you'll get that. And also and it's a great compliment to the book because if you get the download, you're like, oh man, I need more. Well, if you get the download, then you go get the book, then you, you'll have the complete package. And then if you get all that and you're still stuck, you can schedule a call with me and I'll, we'll, we can talk about how to make sure you, you stay productive because here's the thing. My heart's, um, my heart is that business owners, have a productive and successful 2023. I want to see us win. And if you're not winning with your money, that's because that's everything. Because if you don't win with your money, then you're, you're not going to be winning. Because if, if you're if you're struggling to collect the cash, it means you're struggling, you know, you're struggling at the end of your sales cycle because it's sales and AR. They go together. If you think if you listen to if you listen to this on, on the repeat, you'll hear me talk about the sales process with the cell phone. Everything I talked about with the cell phone is what happens in business. Right, right, right. So D, I can't thank you enough again for being with a guest today. It's a lot. Thank and this you. Is a great way to start the bonus bonus series. Excellent. Thank you so much. So that's our show for today. Follow Start Right Here on Instagram at start underscore right underscore here underscore podcast and check out the last word newsletter for my latest musings on beauty and inclusion